Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for another day of life. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings that you show us about the promise, Father. Lord, we count it a great honor to be with our brothers and sisters here this morning at this place you set aside where you come to worship you. Yes. Father, we ask that you, your presence be with us here this morning, Lord. We need that above everything else. Lord, we ask that you bless everything that's said or done here this morning, Lord, for that place of your holy name. Father, help us to be humble. Help us to be alive so awesome down the world today. Father, we need to be about your business and not doing the things, Lord, that the world has got us into. And we ask, Lord, that you give us strength and power over those yes, things, God. Lord. Help us, Father, to be content in whatever condition we may be in, Lord. Help us to love you more every day. Help us, Lord, to plead your cause to the lost and dying this morning. We ask, Lord, that you help us to be a light, Lord, to take a look at it, see our lives, Lord, and know that there's something within us, Lord, that they need. Father, help us to be an influence on someone today for your purposes, Lord. Father, we ask that you bless the service this morning. We ask that you bless Brother Mike as he brings that message to us from that far country, Lord. We ask that you anoint his lips this morning. Yes. And that word will come upon us, Lord, and bless us, Lord, and soak up in our hearts and our minds, Lord, as a, as a as a burn scar or something, that Lord, that we continue to keep you on our mind, Lord. You have your yeah. precious word, Lord. Help us be in those things and let's help us to get the world away from us this morning. Father, again, we thank you for everyone that's here this morning. We ask, Lord, that you remember those that are sick and afflicted in the nursing homes and the hospitals. Father, we ask that you strengthen and encourage them. Father, we ask that you comfort those that death has taken a loved one. Father, we ask that you do the one of all comfort, Lord, that you can take care of them, Lord, with this turn them over you here this morning. Lord, we ask now that you go with us to the rest of the service. Bless everything that's said or done here this morning. To uplift your holy name. For it's in that precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that I ask these things. Once again, I thank Satan this morning and the battle of him all. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air Coming after you and me Joy is ours to share What rejoicing there will be When the saints shall rise Headed for that jubilee Yonder in the sky 
Amen. We don't have to wait till then to get all excited. There you go, Amen. but <laughs> I was getting worried here. Isn't that right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm so glad to have Brother Mike here. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. Brother Mike, come on. Okay. Amen. There's a little water there. There's the water. There. Okay. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. It came on green now. Yes, uh, <laughs> well, it's good to be back home. Uh, I told Brother Brad, uh, I said, I'm going to try to hold my emotions. Uh, I was just sitting there on the front pew, and boy, I tell you, things just flooded my mind and my heart. But I want to thank Brother Brad for letting me come this morning. Uh, uh, I've been having pastor now for a few months, but uh, I've had plenty of, uh, I've preached about every Sunday somewhere. And I just didn't know how many people, how many people would uh, let me come back, you know. I just appreciate it. And I'm glad Brother Brad uh, said that because I was getting a little worried because I'm not used to being too quiet, you know. Uh, I'm used to people saying amen and hallelujah. And so uh, when he said that, I thought, Phew, okay, he, he let me loose here. But Brother, Brother Kenny back here put the pressure on me and I was hoping that I wouldn't be on TV. Uh, uh, I don't know. I told him, is there any way, any way he could cut things out? He said, I don't know. It depends on what you say. <laughs> but you know what? I know, I know a lot of you. I, I got a lot of people that, I got a lot of old friends this morning. I mean, literally old. Okay. Okay, all right. none of you are old, are you? You're just still young, right? But I, I know there's a lot of you that I've known for many, many years now and uh, was your pastor for several years. And, uh, but I know a lot of you by the back of your head. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, because uh, I, I've watched the TV. I've, I'd love to hear Brother Brad preach. And I, I, I almost 
want to preach his sermon this morning that he preached the other day. But, uh, but, I've seen, but I know a lot of you by the back of your head because that's all I see. Okay? All right. And um, I'm not, I don't think that gentleman's here this morning, but uh, I think the last time I showed, uh, one of the brothers, uh, he was scratching his back. <laughs> so, so you, know, you know, when you're on TV... You can't pick your nose and you can't scratch your back, all right? Uh, but, but anyway, I, I appreciate the TV, the TV program because there's no other uh, religious or any other churches in, you know, that, that are on there. They used to be down through the years, different churches. But uh, I'm glad that you took that undertaking. And uh, so uh, it's a blessing. So sometimes when I'm sitting there and, and I'm feeling sorry for myself, having a pity party, uh, I turn on that Channel 15 and... Uh, you, got, you guys didn't sing this morning. I've heard you sing on, but I appreciate the folks that did sing this morning. Bless my heart. And that one song that they sung this morning, I don't know if you remember, but uh, uh, the, many, many years ago, the King's Traveler sung that song when it first came out. The person that wrote that, if you remember, Brother Lodge, the person that wrote that song, they knew them personally, and they let them have that song. And they sung that first song that they sung this, this morning at one of the services. And, you know, over the years, I, I was thinking about on the way here this morning, you know, can you remember some of the great revivals that we've had here years ago? And I know you've had some since then, amen. But, uh, you know, we had some great... The Lord laid in my heart to always have the best here. And uh, we had, you know, the King's Travelers. Uh, we had Brother Wilbur Hurt. He's with us. He's in heaven now. We had Brother... Charlie Ashcraft, he's in heaven. Brother Red Turner, he's in heaven. And many, many others that we had, and many of them are with the Lord. But you know what? We can't live in the past. But it's, the past is good, though, when we can look back and see what God did in all of our lives. But you know what? We can't, and we look towards the future, but we can't, Take care of that. All we have to do is live for the present. And you think back those years back when God worked in our life and God blessed and God touched your life. We can cherish those things and it, it blesses us. But oh, today, this morning, we need to take advantage of right now. Because right now, this moment, is all that we have, and that's all that we can take care of, right. is this present. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I was going to read something here if I can find it. Uh, I just thought about it when I was sitting there. Uh, I looked down, and, and this old Thompson Chain Bible, I got a, I got a brand new one that the church uh, at, at, at Osgood gave me. They gave me a, a new Thompson Chain a few years ago, but uh, it's really nice, and I just use that for funerals and stuff, but this old Thompson Chain Bible is what you folks gave me many, many years ago. Remember that? You gave me this Thompson Chain Bible, and if I was to let go of it, it's, the word will go everywhere, you know, and I thought, I mean, I thought about getting it rebound, rebound, rebound but uh, uh, if you look at it, you say, how in the world could you even read it, because I've got something like you do the psalm book. I've got things wrote, written in my, in my Bible here. But uh, I was thinking, and I almost broke down when I, it hit me that this was the Bible that the Open Door Baptist Church gave me many, many years ago when I was a pastor here. Amen. Look around, I see all the improvements to the building. Beautiful. Uh, you all be proud of what you got here. God's blessed you in so many, many ways. And Brother Brad was down a minute ago, and I'm going to get preaching here, but I just need to say these few things. But uh, Brother Brad a minute ago was trying to get me hooked up, and I said, you think I need this? I've, I don't need a microphone. He said, yeah, but it's for recording purposes. <laughs> and so we went through the little red and green, and I said, well, where's the yellow? <laughs> you know, you got red, yellow, and green. Caution. He said, we don't have caution around here. And I said, oh, my. So uh, Brother Kenny and Sister Brenda know how I am with the red and green. Remember that? We did a wedding. Well, we did your guys' wedding. 
and I was supposed to push it on green, and I thought I had it on green, but it wasn't on green. So I, and we had, it was a huge wedding outside, and I really had to raise my voice. <laughs> because I, did, I was embarrassed to, to, to reach down there and pull that thing out in the middle of a t wedding ceremony. So, but everybody did hear me, didn't they? I mean, I'm saying, everybody did hear me, didn't they? All right, they did hear me. So, I, I'm sure I got it on green because it's, it's going, right? Okay. Someone gave this to me, and it kind of goes along with what we're going to preach about and this morning. And you probably, the person who gave it to me probably got it off uh, somewhere, Facebook or something. And you might have already read it, but I liked it. It says, keep your fork, the best is yet to come. How many already read this? Huh? You already read it? Okay, well, pray, I, mean, I didn't know. It was really good. It said there was a Christian lady who was diagnosed with terminal illness and had been given three months to live. So as she was getting her things in order, she contacted her pastor and had him come to her house to discuss certain aspects of her final wishes. She told him what songs she wanted sung in her service, what scriptures she would like to to be read, and what outfits she wanted to be buried in. The woman, the woman also requested to be buried in, with her favorite Bible. Everything was in order, and the pastor was preparing to leave when the woman suddenly remembered something very important to her. There's one more thing, she replied excitedly. What's that? Came the pastor's reply. This is very, very important, the woman continued. I, don't want, me, I want to be buried with a fork in my right hand. Amen. The pastor stood looking at the woman, not knowing quite what to say. That surprises you, doesn't it? The woman asked. Well, to be honest, I'm puzzled by the request, said the pastor. The woman explained. In all my years of attending church socials and potluck dinners, I always remember when the dishes of the main courses were being cleared, someone would inevitably lean over and say, keep your fork. It was my favorite part because I knew that something better was coming, like velvet chocolate cake or deep dish apple pie. Something wonderful and with substance. So I just wanted people to see me there in the casket with a fork in my right hand and I want them to wonder, what's with the fork? Then I want you to tell them, Pastor. Keep your fork. The best is yet to come. Yeah. The pastor's eyes welled up with tears of joy as he hugged the woman goodbye. He knew this would be the one of the last times he would see her before her death. But he also knew that the woman had a better grasp of heaven than most Christians did. She knew that something was better was coming. As her funeral people were walking by the woman's casket and they saw the pretty chest that she was wearing, her favorite Bible, and the fork placed in her right hand. Over and over the past heard the question, what's with the fork? And over and over he just smiled. And during his message, the pastor told the people of the conversation he had had with the woman shortly before she died. He also told them the fo about the fork and about the symbolize to her. The pastor told the people how he could not th stop thinking about the fork and told them they probably would not be able to stop thinking about it either. He was right. So the next time you reach down for your fork, let it remind you ever so gently that the best is yet to come. Yes, amen. Folks, in this old life, things get difficult. That's right. We go through so many valleys sometimes, but yet we went through a lot of mountaintops together too. Yes. Well, we go through the valleys and we go through the discouragements and pastors and pastors' wives and church families and church people you invite and you witness and you tell people about Jesus and yet they don't want to listen so many times or they'll shrug you off 
or will even laugh at you. But you know what? The best is yet to come. I don't know. It's good to see all you folks. I don't want to pick out because if I pick out one person, then everybody else gets jealous. But uh, uh, brother, brother Tom Kent, uh, the church I've been preaching, his brothers got saved and going there. And I have to tell Paul Kent that he's better looking than Tom. But wait, but, but this morning I got to say, Tom, you're better looking than Paul. Okay, all right, all right. And uh, it's good to see. But, uh, but you know, I, I, when I've been preaching there, uh, I look down at Paul and the big tears just rolling down his cheeks. Just rolling down his cheeks. And uh, it's good to see Brother Dahl and his dear wife, Sandy. And Brother Dahl, I don't know if he remembers, but I used to come in the break room a lot. And I always had a big mouth. And I'd come in and I'd say, better days ahead. He remembers that. And them guys would say, shut up, preacher. You know where you're at, don't you? And I said, yeah, I'm in the factory. But you know what? There's something better than like, right. VSG now. Than Rotary, you know, oh, they treat me good. Okay, all right. But you know what? There's better days ahead. I want you to, to find your Bibles this morning. I'm going to preach. Okay. I want to preach. But I was looking out that window, and I know when I used to stand behind the old pulpit, this is a beautiful pulpit here, but I used to glance out that window to make sure nobody was coming in to get me, okay? Uh, all right, so, and I got some stories, but I won't tell them this morning, but you folks was pastor, well, I see here, you know some things that happened, people coming in during the service and stuff, and, uh, I, you know, God, you know, God's gave, over the years, God's gave me great people. I'm not a very good preacher. I'm not a very good speaker. I'm not, but God's always gave me great people to help me, and that's what makes a good church, a great church, is you folks. So would you, I, would you stand to your feet one more time? This shows reverence to God's Word, and I know you reverence God's words, and I want to ask you one more thing, and, and I don't have to be worried here, but if you got your Bible, would you hold it in the air? And, and Oh my, that's so great. Now, would you wave it at me? Now, don't throw them at me. Just wave them at me, okay? Praise God, that's so good. You go to a lot of places nowadays and people don't take their Bibles no more. That blesses Mark. And we're going to go to a scripture that you don't even have to look at because you've got it memorized. Uh, when those little fellows were going out a minute ago, I thought that's where I ought to go preach to them little kids, all right? Because uh, uh, they'll probably understand me better than you will, all right? But, uh, but anyway... Uh, I want you to turn to your Bibles to the book of St. John, chapter 3, and verse 16. You say, preacher, I come this morning just to hear you preach about John 3, 16. Folks, we need to preach more about John 3, 16. Right, we don't hear that much anymore. Right. It's just turn over a leaf, come up here and join the church. Do the best you can. Give enough money, you'll go to heaven. You go to the right place, you'll go to heaven. We hear a, we hear a lot of different things nowadays. Right. So I want you to do one more thing with me. I want you to say it with me, out loud. Now, if you need to read it, I'm going to read it because I'm almost 70 years old now. So, all right, so I'm getting, I am old, okay? All right, so... But I know it by memory like you do. But if you want to say by memory, you can or you can read your Bible. But would you say, well, don't get ahead of me. Don't drag behind. Stay with me. All right, here we go. All right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. One more time, let's pray. Father, bless your word. God, don't let me preach too long. Lord, don't let me preach too short. Holy Spirit, reveal to me. Let me know when it's time to hush. And Lord, would you move through the Holy Spirit and through your precious word. And Lord, touch our hearts. Lord, I thank you once again. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity this morning. Lord, I can't preach unless you preach through me. Lord, you have to give me that unction from heaven. Yes. Holy Spirit, you've got to take this carnal body and this carnal mind. And Lord, preach through me this morning. Lord, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for standing. I, pre I appreciate this. 
This verse, John 3, 16, has been called the love verse of the Bible. I can understand that, amen? This verse, and uh, this verse uh, I've said many times, but well, I said it here years ago uh, when I preached here. Uh, this verse has, has 25 words in it. And the middle, the middle word of this, of this verse is the word son, S-O-N. Isn't, isn't that a very appropriate? Right. When God gave us the word of God, he did it right, amen? amen. It's perfect, it's infallible, it's inherent, the word of God. And so the middle word of the, of the 25 verses is the word son this morning. Uh, we find that, you know, I, I've said before that, that if this was the only verse that was in the Bible, it would be sufficient. Because in John 3, 16, we have everything that we need to know, really. Amen. Amen. That all we really need to know, now God gives us a lot of more revelations, gives a lot more in the scriptures, but if John 3, 16 covers it all, it covers the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. It covers why Jesus came. It covers everything that we need to know as an individual. And so John 3, 16 is one of my favorite, and they're all my favorite, but it's one of my favorites, the word of the scripture, John, John 3, 16. Uh, some, you know, years ago when I was younger and uh, uh, I, I was, you know, I used to be, there was a time that Brother Tom Kemp this morning asked me if I still spit. And I said, well, not as far and not as much. Uh, you folks that used to come here, nobody would sit on the front row. All right, so I don't think you have to worry about that this morning too much. But, but anyway, uh, they got me tied down. There was times years ago when I was younger and stuff, I've been known to take my coat off and just kind of throw it somewhere, but they got me tied down, so I can't do that this morning, all right? But anyway, whatever God asks us to do, we're going to do it this morning. But, but, I, but you know, they used to call me old-fashioned, and they still call me an old-fashioned preacher. And, you know, when people say that, they think they're, they're upsetting me. They think that they're being mean to me. But you know when someone says, you know what, I heard you as an old-fashioned preacher. And I go, hey, amen. That's, right, amen. That's a compliment. That's not a downgrade. Folks, I want to be what God wants me to be. i got to be me. But you know what, I, I, I'm not politically correct either. I never have been really very political, and I never have been correct. All right? But you know what? I just want to be God's man, preaching God's word, and just being simple, because I can't be anything else but simple. But you might call me old-fashioned, but that's okay. That's all right. And so John 3, 16 uh, is an old-fashioned sermon, but it still has the power of God upon it today. And it will never, ever lose its power. Uh, we, we find that in this scripture, we have some wonderful and some great things this morning. Uh, I won't have the, the right words to say, but I'll do the best I can to try to describe how wonderful and how great John 3.16. I, I believe the first thing about John 3.16, we have a great or the greatest character. It says there, for God. How great he is this morning. Consider those words. Consider those first words for God this morning. We cannot ever overlook God. Uh, the psalmist says there, the fool has said in his heart there's no God. Now, the Bible says that we shouldn't call people fools, but the Bible does. The Bible says it's a fool that a man or a woman or a young person say there's no God. People say, well, I don't, I don't understand God. Well, that you know what? I don't want a God that I can figure out. Amen. I don't want a God that I can dissect. Right. I don't want a God that I, that I can figure. I want, I want a God that's greater than I am. Right. I want a God that's greater than anything, anywhere, anytime this morning. Right. And so this morning, he is the greatest, greatest God. And we, this morning in Sunday school, it was talking about different, different beliefs and different. There's only one God. The Bible said there's one God. There's one mediator. Amen. There's one baptism, the Bible says. Right. And so for God, He is the greatest, uh, the greatest character that we can ever, ever experience in our lives. Yes, for right. God so loved the world. Oh, you know, we look at the Bible this morning, and God is the author of the Word of God. 
The Bible is God's book. The Bible, we call it the Holy Bible. We call it the Word of God. And the Bible is God's book to us. You want God to speak to you? Read His book. Amen. You want God to talk to you? And you know, and there's people that don't believe God can talk to you. Let me tell you, God can talk to you. That's right. Through the Word of God. Yeah. Through the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, if God's never talked to you, uh, you better be worried. That's right. You better be concerned. And you know, God can talk to you other ways too. God can cause you to have a flat tar, maybe. I don't know. God, you know, God can give you a headache, maybe. You know, I'm not saying he does that, but I'm saying God speaks to you through his word, through the Holy Spirit, and then God speaks to us through circumstances, too. You might be laying flat in the hospital bed, and God will talk to you and say, you know what, you need to do this, you need to do that, and you need to change this in your life. But for God so loved the world. Well, the scriptures testify about God. 66 books, 45 different writers, over 1,500 years. And they all, they all tell the same story. There's no discord. There's no, no contradictions. It's harmonized. It's perfect. It's the word of God. We find the writers were farmers, they were fishermen, they were unlearned, they were learned, they were noble, noblemen, but they all wrote about the same truth. I heard a preacher say one time, if you was to tear a page out of the Bible, it would bleed. From Genesis to Revelations, we have the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. We have the blood from the very first. You know, God... Even in creation, we have the Trinity. You no, know, there's a, churches that don't believe in the Trinity. But I tell you, the Trinity is all through the Bible. The, Jesus even said, when you baptize, baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We find even in creation, even in creation, we have the Father and we have the Son and we have the Holy Spirit. Amen? The Bible says the Spirit of God moved on the face of the earth, the face of the water. The Bible says that God said, let us make man. We have the Trinity. But, but we find that, that they all tell the, the perfect, the finished perfect work of God. You know, even, even before Jesus came, we had, we had people. We had people that believed in, the, in God. We look at Abraham. And the Bible said because of Abraham's belief that God counted him to righteousness. They didn't have the Bible. They didn't have the Word of God. Aren't you glad that they, they could be saved? They could believe in God just like we believe in But we had the, the whole Bible. You know, the problem is God made us. Amen. God made us. And God gave us his Son. But God also did, but God also gave us a will. Yes. Yes. And so, you have a choice. You have a will. God did all he can do. That's right. Amen? But God gave every, we're not robots. God gave us a will. And so we have the greatest character in God. You know, we can, mankind can look at nature itself and know there's a higher power. You know, I believe inside of, uh, inside of everybody there's a desire to know something greater than they are. Even, even those that might be atheists or agnostics. I, I've stood beside over the years and it's not been pleasant, but I've stood by the bed of those dying lost and saved. And I, I've seen those that knew the Lord, they would die in peace. And many times die with a smile on their face. Or many times they'll tell, I've had them tell me, I see the angel. But I also have stood beside those that were lost. That chose not to believe in Jesus. And so many times it's a terrible, horrible death. I've had them scream. I've had them tell me that it was right before they died, it was hot. They seen the flat. Let me tell you, there's a heaven and a hell. That's right. 
People make the wrong choice so many times. But inside a man, there's a, there's a desire for something greater than they are. And he's right there. If you'll just let him come in. I believe also we, hardly here, we also have the greatest expression. For God so loved. We have the greatest character, but we also have the greatest expression, which is love. For God so loved the world. You know, I remember when I was in Bible college, and our, our, I've been Dr. Charlie, there's one of the professors, and he said, I want you for an assignment to write a paragraph about de de define the love of God. Define it. You know, I, went home, I thought, I'm going to get an A on this. I went home and I described, you know, what God, what God's love did and how great God's love was. And we all turned it in and it didn't take him 15 minutes and every one of them had red marks, F, 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 F. We all went, my. He said, boys, he said, don't feel bad. You just do what everybody else does. He said, all you did was describe what God's love does. You only describe what God's love can do. But he said, nobody can really ever describe the love of God. It's beyond our understanding. Right. Folks, God loved you when you was a sinner. God loved you when you was ungodly, unwicked, undone. He loved you and he loved me. That's love, folks. That's real love. Oh, you know the only thing that separates us from, from heaven and hell is the cross. See, there was three crosses. There was one that believed and one that didn't believe. And the only thing that separ separated that one from that one was Jesus in the middle. Was the cross. Oh, aren't you glad that he loved you? For God so loved the world. You could put your name in there. For God so loved whatever your name is. That's how much he loved you this morning. He loved you even on the cross. He forgave that one that believed. He made arrangements for his mother while he's on the cross. Folks, he, he told the one that believed, today thou will be with me in paradise. The greatest expression, the greatest expression you can ever ever experience is the love of God. Amen. You know, the Father was pleased there when Jesus was on the cross. He said, this is my beloved Son when he was baptized in his ministry. The Bible says that we have passed from death unto life when we believe in Jesus. The Bible says, love casteth out all fear. The Bible says, love, love uh, believeth all things. Uh, love bears all things. Love endures all things. The Bible says, love never fails. Amen? It never fails. But you know what? We need to serve God not just by our feelings, but we need, also need to serve God by our faith. There are some days I feel great. Not very often, but some days I feel great. Uh, the other day I was, my, my Emma, she turned 16 this week, and Today they're having a big, I think it's bigger than the royal wedding yesterday. <laughs> oh, my, I can't, my house is stuffed with balloons and decorations. And, and so they're going to have it at the golf course this afternoon. So I've got to get to a big birthday party this afternoon. But, but anyway, uh, they were laughing at me because I have trouble getting up the bleachers and the last six months or so, when I get down on the, I was planting some tomato plants the other day, and some of my neighbor gave, some of you guys know how tight my neighbor gave me the tomato plants. All right, so you guys know how tight I am. But, but I was down on my knees planting those tomato plants, about 12, 15 of them, that I couldn't get up. And I rolled around on the ground a little while, and there was a fence there, but it was an electric fence, so I couldn't grab the fence, and there was a guy over watching me, and he said, are you okay? I said, uh-huh, that's Kentucky talk for yes. Uh-huh, I'm okay, you know. And, and, and so finally I, I got, got on one knee and got up and, and, and you know, and, and at the house when I'm doing something, I have to grab a hold of something. And some of the guys at me said, I have the same problem. But my kids, my grandkids, they laugh at me because I can't get up off the floor without grabbing something. And I said, your day's coming. Amen. 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 I get amen on that, kid. 
Your day's coming. It's coming. But oh, this morning, the love of God. And we find it's the greatest gift. The greatest gift. For God so loved the world that He gave. He gave His only Son. He gave Him. He gave Him. For us. Someone said one time that a gift, someone said one time that a gift that cost no sacrifice is no proof of devotion. Could you get that? See, we can, we can uh, buy our spouses, we can buy, we can go spend a lot of money on things, on gifts. And if you got a lot of money or you got enough money to do it, it's no, it's no sacrifice. But you know what, you mamas, and grandmas, and us papas and dads, we're saying, you let them little sweet little darlings go to school, and they labor with, with popsicle sticks and glue, and they put little, draw little flowers, you know, and, 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 and they work so hard, and they bring it home, and they'll say, Mommy or, or Grandma or Dad, look what I made for you. And you talk about something that touches your heart. It goes right on the refrigerator, right? It don't go in a box. It goes right on the refrigerator because that little sweet little boy, that little sweet little girl worked and labored and had a sacrifice and they made it just for you and it's special. There's a little kid, she's, just about, she's about this tall. I've got to be careful, I'm on TV. She's about this tall. At the church I've been preaching at, and a couple weeks ago she drew a picture of me. And she drew me a picture behind the pulpit, and she had the pulpit about here, and she made me about this tall. <laughs> oh, you can see it's top of my head. <laughs> so I told her, I said, I said, I said, honey, I said, next time you draw me a picture, can you make me a little taller? And so last Sunday, she drew me another picture. And she ran out there, they have junior church, and she ran out there, that picture, and she said, look what I got. And she drew a picture, and she had the pool picture, and she had me this tall. I kept it. I like being tall. I never was tall. I like being tall. Amen. Oh, my, the greatest expression. For God so loved. For God so loved the world. My I could tell stories upon story how much God loves us this morning. But Jesus came from heaven down as a humility of a servant from the throne of God to a man in a stable. He left the riches of heaven to the greatest poverty on earth. He was the creator of all the, earth, of all the wealth of the world but borrowed a shed in which to be born, a boat to cross the treacherous waters of Galilee. Ball a donkey on which to make his triumphant entry, entry into Jerusalem. Borrowed a wooden cross on which to die. And borrowed a new tomb in which to die to be buried. But all praise three gods. Three days later he arose from the grave. <laughs> Amen. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. All these other gods, their bodies are in the grave. But our Savior lives on forever. He's a risen Savior. And He lives in our hearts today. Amen. And I'll make a Baptist shout. Yeah. Then we have the greatest opportunity. We have the greatest opportunity. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever believeth in Him we can't blame God. We can't blame Jesus. We can't even blame the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, if you don't get saved and go to a devil's hell. You know, the Bible was true when it says that the road to hell is a broad road, and many there be. And then he says, the Bible says that the road to heaven is a narrow way. I think that's going to be a lot of surprised people someday. Okay? I hope everybody goes to heaven. God didn't make hell for us. He made hell for the devil and his angels. God sent his son. 
He made a way for us. Amen? He made a way for us. All we have to do is accept it. Trust Him. You say, well, if I get saved, I, I can't have no fun. Well, you ain't been around me. I think a Christian is the only one that can have fun. Huh? You got your sit. Well, most of us have got our senses. All right. I mean, we. I mean, we don't. We don't have to get high to have. We just got to get high on the Lord Jesus Christ. You folks hear me? Many, some of you've heard me say a hundred times. You know what? I'm not a fanatic. I'm just a fan of Jesus. Amen. Oh my! This morning, we don't like to talk. A, talk about heaven or hell, but the old, the old black preacher said this one time about getting saved. He put it this way. He said, God cast a vote for me to be saved. The devil voted, voted for me to be lost. So that made it a tie. So he said, I cast a deciding vote, vote in favor of God in salvation. How are you going to vote this morning if you don't know the Lord? God's already voted for you. The devil's voted against you. It's a tie. How are you going to vote? Then we have the greatest punishment this morning. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Should not perish. You know, I watch, here once in a while, I watch you on TV. Okay. Well, you're a handsome up here, brother, when you're up here in the home. Yes. Did you get the makeup? Yeah, no, I didn't get the makeup, no. But, uh, but I enjoy. And I hear you folks say, man, every once in a while, Brother Kenny Becker scans the camera. And I'll say, what? Uh, my wife, the first time we seen it, she was in the room, and I said, come here. I said, here's Open Door Baptist Church. She said, oh, no, you're kidding me. And she come watch. She said, well, that's not open door. I said, yes, it is. Then I don't know who I've seen. I said, well, there's Brother Tom or somebody. I said, yeah, it's open door. It's changed since we came here. Remember those of us here with us, we had to sweep out the bird's nest and dust that thick. And some of you maybe remember that. And, God, God blessed. When all that week went by, the people didn't walk the aisle. Not because of me. Because of him. Yeah. Because of you people went out and knocked on doors and brought people in. But you know, I know society has changed since then too. Man's hearts have become desperately wicked. I realize the Bible says that. Not, but oh, the greatest punishment. You know the story of the rich man, Lazarus. The rich man died and went to hell. And he said, I'm in torment. And Lazarus, when he died, was in Abraham's bosom. Oh, my. Everybody wants to go to heaven, don't they? There was, and I'm going to move on. I'm about done here. There was a young preacher one time that he loved to preach on hell. I don't love, no, I don't. I don't preach on money. Those that know me, I, I don't think I've ever preached on money. Maybe it was the scripture made me. Okay. But I just never did get ever. God, like the brother said, the Lord's always supplied. He's always supplied through his people. But as a young preacher, he just loved to preach on the lake of fire. Just loved to preach on. I think he got, I think he got enjoyment out of it. And there was an old preacher. One day pulled him aside and he said, young man, he said, I've been here several times and said, you just love to preach on hell. He said, I want to ask you a question. He said, young man said, what's that? You know, he thought he was going to say something, compliment him, you know. He said, do you ever shed any tears? Do you ever shed any tears when you preach on hell? We ought not enjoy, rejoice in it. We ought not get, ought not get excited. We ought to be sad. Because a lot of us, most of us, we're going to have family. That's right. That was a blessing when the young daughter, when his daughter said that about, about her dad. 
He said down, and I said, that's the best compliment you can ever get, is have your own children. I remember a long time ago, the place was packed in here. And my oldest son came forward. I didn't know what he, he was supposed to, he was saved. I didn't know what, I thought, what's he done, you know? He come down the aisle, Chris, my oldest son, walked down the aisle, cried like a baby. And he was a teenager. And he come down, and I stood, stand down there, and he fell on, me, fell on me and put his arms around me. And he said, Dad, you're my hero. I'm no hero, but in his eyes it was. Brother, you're a hero to your children and your grandchildren, hopefully to your, to your wife. All this morning, you know what happens to most of us? We get saved and we get satisfied. It's like the old Frenchman. He was bragging about his wheelchair, I mean, about his, <laughs> his rocking chair. Not his wheelchair, you don't brag about a wheelchair. He was bragging about his rocking chair. He said, I got the best and the most expensive rocking chair you can buy. And the guy said, really? And the Frenchman said, there's only one problem with this rocking chair. He said, it's comfortable. It rocks good. But he said, I rock and I rock and I rock, but I don't get nowhere. That's why a lot of us are. We're just a rock. And we're not getting nowhere. Oh, my. People dying and going to hell. And last of all, I usually get amen when I say the last of all. Amen. Yeah. All right. I won't spend much time on this because time's good. He didn't tell me when to stop. I'm just letting the Holy Spirit help me here. But we all, we have the greatest, the greatest possession. Yes. He said you'll have present tense, not six months later. Not, he said you shall have present tense everlasting life. The moment you trust him, your name is written in the Lamb's Book yeah. of Life. The moment you call upon him, he comes in. God never lied to me. He's never lied to me. I've had people lie to me. I've had people tell me how great a preacher I was, and they talk about me when they get down the road. <laughs> That's all right. And you know what? If you don't talk about me, I get a little worried about it, maybe. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But we have the greatest, greatest possession Praise God, don't worry. We have a promise. We have a promise of heaven. The psalmist, said, the psalmist sang there, he said, With long life will I satisfy him, and I will show him my salvation. Well, this morning, if you're saved this morning, you're going to heaven. You've heard me say over and over, years ago I used to say, There's no vacancy signs in heaven. Amen? There's no vacancy signs in heaven. If you're saved, you're going to meet him someday. You're going to meet him. And you know what? I believe, with, and some preachers disagree with me, and that's okay. That's all right. But I believe when we get there, some way, somehow, God, we're going to know each other. I believe that. You might disagree with me. That's okay. But I like what Paul said there in the book of Corinthians. He said, we'll be known as we are. And the Greek word for known there is recognize. Recognize. Let me tell you, the Bible talks about reunions. There's going to be a reunion someday. Yes, and I, I could stay, stand here the rest of the morning and the fried chicken could burn, I know. But you know what? I can look now in my spiritual eyes and I could see different ones that have gone on from this church. We're going to see him again someday. Amen. 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 Yeah. I can't wait. Think we have a good time down here, church? Wait till we get really get home. Wait till we really get home. They just sung about it a minute ago. 
Every head bowed and every eye closed. Brother Brad, you can come if you want, brother. Let Brother Brad give the invitation. He knows you folks better than me. Amen. Let's all stand, every head bowed and every eye closed. For God so loved the world. He loved you. He gave. He gave. He made a way. There ain't no greater gift. Nothing greater could have ever done. He did for you. He did for me. He did for the world. This is whosoever believes. You got to receive that gift. awful it is. So many don't make that choice. Brother Mike says we all have a choice. He didn't make us robots and but he desires that you call upon him. Oh, if you've never called upon him, the devil will say, oh well, someday. Hell is full of people that said someday. As he knocks on your heart's door, whatever need you have, there's a risen Savior. He's here for you. Call upon him. Don't go out that door with that worry. We sang that song, It's Well with My Soul. Is it well? There's something wrong. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Him. Everlasting life. Have you got it? <coughs> you didn't get it from coming to church. You didn't get it for being good. You didn't get it from mom or daddy choice you had to
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.